Welcome to another episode of Cleaning and Cocktails. I know it's been a while. I apologize. I've been I've been busy building, as me and Josh were talking about earlier today, right? But guys, you know the deal. I bring on people from the cleaning industry, uh, business mindset, successful people that have done it, that are doing it, that are still that still want more in it, right? Uh, business owners, people from commercial, residential, suppliers, manufacturers, anything and everything cleaning. Why? Because it's called cleaning and cocktails, right? I, I love this industry. I want to pay homage to it, so I want to bring a lot of great people on uh, and have them, at the end of the day, just share their story because the, nothing better in life than to hear stories. And when people share stories, they're sharing their passion and they're speaking from the heart. So today, I have the pleasure of bringing on one of my good friends, uh, a colleague, a fellow podcaster, Josh Melton. So Josh, I mean, you already know how this goes. I mean, you guys can tell by looking at his background. This guy's got a podcast of his own. He's got the deal going on. Josh, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with me. Yeah, man, dude. Thanks for the invite. I feel like 2022 has been celebrity building for Josh Melton. I mean, I was on the cleaning and cocktails stage in Chicago <laughs> earlier this year. I'm on the cleaning and cocktails podcast. I don't, I mean, this is the pinnacle of the industry. I feel like with this is a big moment for me. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Man. Well, thank you so much for that. All right. And so you guys know it's cleaning and cocktails. I usually have felt, you know, today I'm, I'm going special. I got a beer. It's brewed out here in Chicago. Hopewell. It's a German Pilsner. Uh, Josh has got a cocktail. Uh, I don't really know what's in it. It's an infused cocktail because my man here is on day, I believe we said day 26 of 75 Heart. Before we get That's into right. everything, Josh, just I think it'd be cool to just, what is 75 Heart for those that don't know? Can you just explain that a little bit? Because I, I think that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, man. So I, I'll tell you, I came into, um, you know, into this past like school year with my kids. You know, it's going into the summer. I just got down with a full house renovation, went to cleaning and cocktails right at, right as school ended, right as the house renovation ended. And I came into like a realization, like, hey, I'm kind of burnt out a little bit. And so this summer, man, I wasn't really like intentional about my fitness or anything, but rolling into August, school's about to start back. I'm like, I got to get a grip on just being like mentally sharp and physically fit. As I 75 is a program by a guy named Andy Frisella. It's really a mental toughness program. It's 75 days, you got five rules. Let me see if I can remember all of them. Uh, you got to be on a diet. But say what diet it is. You just got to have on some meeting. You got to be on some type of meal plan. You can create your own. You can, and you can have no cheat meals and no alcohol. Hence the al- non non alcoholic cocktail, cocktail infused or infused cocktail. <laughs> yeah, man. So two workouts a day. You got to be at least three hours apart, and both workouts have to be at least forty five minutes. One's got to be outside. So actually, man, I'm glowing a little bit because I just did my outside workout like right before I came in for the podcast. You got to read ten pages a day of nonfiction, it's like personal development book. You got to take a picture of yourself and you got to drink a gallon of water which is surprisingly the hardest part about that, it you're getting that, a gallon of water every day bro. that's what i heard you plan no it. really it's yeah it's difficult like last night I, I didn't plan it out really well and i had to drink about 60 ounces in the last couple hours Ooh. and you're like you're you're trying to figure out if you want to be 75 hard or not man that yeah. last 20 ounces but we'll that's what it. it is it's been a great start and again it's just that focus on you know this is man you're all i always see the the instagram videos of you running and you're talking right and it was just a mental toughness program because you got to think about it kind of consistently throughout the day, get a great plan. And I really needed to be more mentally tough, mentally sharp. So fitness is a part of that. You know, we, we both know that. But that was the goal for me is let me do 75 hard. Um, oh, and you got to do it 75 days in a row. Yeah. You screw up any day. You got to start over from day well, one. Yeah, and, so that, and, that pressure. It's, and I was going to tell you, it's pressure and it's discipline. And I, I give my, my boy Julian kudos on that, too, because like I was telling you before we jumped on, He's on that right now. I think, like we said, you guys are on, I think, both exactly the same day. But to the point that you just said, he 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 messed up one day. And what did he do? He started right back over. Like he had to. You yeah. know, like I, I forget what day it was, but he's right back on it. And I see him. I, I watch it. It's in front of me, right? And it's like, man, that yeah. is, it's mental. Mental, it's tough. Totally. It's um, it, 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 the word discipline. right? You have to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Like think about people that pick five things that, that they have to do every day. I struggle to do two things that I have to do every five, you know, every day. So kudos to both of you guys, man. Yeah, that's, uh, thanks, man. It's that's uh, yeah. For those who don't know that, yeah, we'll, we'll actually include some information uh, within the the episode description because I think it's that important. I've I've been hearing and seeing a lot about that. So back to the cleaning industry. <laughs> so guys, again, like I said, jo- you know, J- Josh, last name Melton. He is from Athens, Georgia. And the name of the company is Athens Cleaning Services, correct, Josh? 
Athens Cleaning, yeah, Athens Cleaning Company. Athens Cleaning Company. Now I know you started the company with, with Kim, or Kim started the company in from the residential space. This was over 15 years ago, am I correct? Yeah, man, 2005. 2005. And she was getting into commercial and she said, I got to get Josh involved. And you said, That's kind of how yes. it happened, man. So, I mean, <laughs> it, that's, that's it, bro. Like, she started cleaning houses kind of like a, a year after we graduated college. She said, I think I want to clean houses. And I was like, Not sure why you went to college to get a marketing degree to decide to clean houses, but more power to you if that's what you want to do. And so uh, we knew we wanted to be entrepreneurs. We knew we wanted, we were already starting to try to get our hands in some different businesses and stuff. And uh, she was cleaning houses. And dude, about nine months into it, Ricky, I tried to talk her out of it. I'm like, look, you've been doing this for nine, 10 months. You're making like 1200 bucks a month right now. Like, just go get a job. We'll end up in another business. She's like, I really feel like this is what we're supposed to do. And like six months later, we build like $10,000. And it was just because we landed our first commercial contract. But man, I quit my job six months later. I went full time in the business. As soon as we started doing commercial, I was in. And we were, it was 2006 at that point. It was, you know, post construction crazy. And it was just crazy. And we did all of it. I mean, I would, I would pressure a while. I would just, if I got asked to do it, you do it yourself. I'd figure it out. You figured out yourself. Yeah. Figure it out. Yep, you know what it is. They're like, hey, yeah. can you do this? I'm like, absolutely. And I just go buy some stuff from Home Depot or wherever and just try to figure it out. And uh, that's how we got our start. But, you know, a, a year into it or whatever, so that six months after I told her to quit this stupid thing. I'm full time in it, and we were. In, I was cleaning houses, you know. And eventually, we figured out for us, like, oh, we like the commercial, we like the office cleaning, and so we 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 dropped the residential, we dropped the post construction cleaning, and we started building a commercial business. Awesome, man! And that's I, I feel like that it's 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 a common theme of you know people that get that 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 taste of commercial like to tra you know will transition over, but I also do pay homage to the people in residential. Uh, Cause there's some very successful people that do it right. Um, but yeah, myself, again, I'm a fan of commercial as well. Um, not that we don't like one-off services and special services like that too. Uh, but I, I forgot to to start with what I was, what, what I'm calling this, this episode or the topic, the theme, I guess, of this episode, Josh, is I look at you as a, as legitimately a serial entrepreneur and I'll, and I'll touch on why I say that, but you're, you're a guy who leads with the heart and, and passion uh, in your faith, right? So, and, and I see it, like you're very consistent when you speak and talk. So for those that don't follow Josh, if you do, uh, just just follow, right? You say some things that I almost forget sometimes and it's like, a, it just just triggers something, right? I'm like, oh, cool, man. You know what? When Josh said that one word, like that, you know, that made me think of something and then I go out about my day and, and it's crazy how if you listen to people that are honest, have integrity, and just lead from the heart. Uh, it, it really, it, again, you say surround yourself with good people. That doesn't have to mean in person. It could be like digitally, right? Online. Like, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, you're you're one of those guys that I, I appreciate what you do and what you talk about. And that's why I said like, you're you're a serial entrepreneur leading from the heart because you're a busy guy too, man. It's not you know you you talk about me being busy. You you have your cleaning company. You've got what you got behind there called Stronger Business. Yeah. And we'll get into that. It's a podcast. Not just a podcast, but it's an event as well. You guys have events that you host, which now we yeah, both yeah. know how hard that shit is. Uh, you and I, uh, by the way, I, I want to say because I have a note here. You had and, and tell me how this fills in, or if you still have this, but Mountain Insurance. Did yeah, so insurance I, had, I was well? in the insurance business for. Um, I mean, that's what I started that because I was like, I need to get out of cleaning houses. I was like, I hate cleaning houses. Oh, so that was. In the, we, during the duration, okay. Yeah, like six months after we, I went full time in the cleaning company, six or seven months, I started an insurance agency. And I did that for, man, um, a while. I did some other things in there too, but I was in the insurance business. I still got my insurance license, but I shut down earlier this year because I was like, I'm just not passionate about it, right? And my kids are a little bit older. And so there's other, I really wanted, when I was in high school, I was like, I'm going to be a history teacher and a coach. I'm going to coach soccer. I'm going to coach baseball. So my kids have been playing soccer and I do that with like coach at the Y. I'm about to start coaching at the school. So I'm like, all right, what am I not passionate about anymore? And so I shut some stuff down that just didn't bring me joy. You know, and that's a hard thing because, you know, entrepreneurs, like we don't, we start new stuff. We rarely like quit stuff. Yeah. But I realized like, this does not bring me joy and I'm not passionate about it. In order to win here, I got to like trade time away from my kids. You know, so I'm like, ah, we're going to shut that down. So you say serial entrepreneur, I say serial failure. But we both know, man, like failure is the fertilizer that leads to ah. success, right? So I'm like, weird. I, I'm in the best spot of my life, man. I love where I'm at right now. It's amazing. That, that's, that's a caption right there. 
Would you say say failure is the fertilizer to success? Absolutely, man. Damn, I like that. See, see, you guys, everybody just gotta, you know, you know, listen for those. Those are that's a nugget right there. I'm, don't be surprised to see that on a post tomorrow. I'll credit Josh Melton. Don't credit uh, Josh Melton. Josh Melton stole it from somebody else. I just don't know. I stole it. <laughs> uh, all right. So and the last thing that I want to touch on before we get into some some uh, nice Q and A is tell me where. I'm looking at seven circle strategies. I mean, I'm, I'm a, the, with the word strategies, I, I have an idea, but seven circle strategies that was built probably, I, I think that's one of your most recent uh, ventures. But w- what is that? If you if you could touch on that for us. Yeah. So this man, it's a consulting thing. This basically I do coaching and consulting and that's the name of the company that are the, the name of the company where I do that through. And that was, a, I was in a band in college as a lead singer of a band. And that was our band name. And I just always loved it. And it was kind of this biblical reference to uh, the, Joshua of the Old Testament and the Battle of Jericho. And they like marched around it seven times and the thing came crumbling down. So it's just a, to me, circle seven, stra- circle seven strategies. It's about looking at things a little bit differently, you know, not doing it the same way everybody else is doing it, but having a different path forward. They said, so that's what I try to do, man, consistently, whatever I'm looking at, whatever I'm doing is to say, like, what's, what's everybody else doing? And then should I do it that way? You know, like, no, I'm going to, I want to see it from a different angle and see if there's a different or a better way. And so, yeah, so when I do coaching and consulting, um, I've done it broadly for any entrepreneurs. I've started focusing more on picking up, you know, in the cleaning business just because I just know the language. I know how to help people at least succeed to the level I'm at doing it the way I'm doing it. I can't teach them how to do it some other way, and I can't teach them to grow beyond where I'm at. But I'm like, where I'm at, if you want to get to where I'm at, I can teach you how to get there. So that's what yeah. Circle, 7, Circle 7 Strategies is. Nice, man. And I, you know what? And, and you bring it up, and I, was in, I forgot to mention that when, when I had talked about Stronger Business. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't realize it's it's for the the everyday entrepreneur and like general business, right? Like I would have thought yeah. for sure it was going to be towards clean, but then I do remember you saying, uh, Rick, yeah, it's not even towards the cleaning industry. It's I actually don't do much with the cleaning industry in general. You're you're more of just business general, right? Abroad. That's right. Yeah, it's just in this. I mean, I had the idea of doing more specific stuff in the industry, you know, and I came up with a name and all this stuff, and I will like. My goal was to launch that earlier, earlier on, but it's called Six Figure Cleaner, you know, because you know this, this is most people think they're starting a cleaning company. They don't think that they can make a hundred, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's like, well, no, you, yeah. no, you can, you, know, you can build these things. This is, it's a, it's hard work, but it's a business you can get into without having to spend hundreds of thousands and you can grow to a level where you're, you know, you're making a lot more money than your friends who are wearing the, the nice suits and the ties going to work oh, every yeah. day, 40, 60 hours. So it's that it's six figure cleaner or something. It'll come out later on this year. Awesome. But uh, I started doing some stuff there. But yeah, stronger business is again. That's kind of a big thing we're doing right now. Uh, we got a conference coming up October thirteenth here in Athens, Georgia, and that was a crazy idea. I have a business partner at this point named Chad Brown, and uh, we merged. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Chad. Was that a friend? Yeah. Was he a friend before? Or man, okay. part of my cleaning journey is like so. Once we started having kids, I just I hated the cleaning the cleaning business. I never wanted to be the cleaning guy. I never wanted to be associated with it. That's why I was always doing this other stuff. And I felt like about four years ago, God said, go all in on this. Just trust me on it. Go all in, give it all you got. I was always trying to build it, Ricky, as like what sometimes entrepreneurs do. Let me build this business system over here that pays me for some of the lifestyle I want. And I just automate it and all this stuff. When we did that, but I felt like there were some fractures in the business and God just said like, go all in, give it all of your strength and your, your, your abilities and your talents. Put it in that business because again, I was just trying to wing it over here. Yeah, and I didn't want to do that, but we did. Um, and in the process of that, we kind of scaled up. So anyway, that being said, in 2013, again, I got this cleaning business. I'm trying to run on the side. I'm like a freaking ninja, dude. Nobody even knows I'm. I got it, you know. And <laughs> a buddy of mine, we mer- he had a small cleaning company. We merged and we just like hired a manager and we tried to run it and automate it in the background. But again, we came in. Uh, again, I felt like God led me. Go all in. And I did, and the business had a lot of fractures in it because the owners weren't treating it right. We weren't, you know, pouring our heart and soul into it. We were running it like a, you know, something that we didn't care that much about. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's lots of holes and fractures in the systems and the culture. And that was, I think, one of the best moments of my life because I realized that I got to, like, pour my heart and soul into this thing. And if I do, then it can grow something phenomenal. And so that's our core values and culture, all that stuff come up. And the process of doing that, though, merging that business with, with Chad – 
over the years, we grew to become friends and he had some crazy, he's like, Hey man, you want to start a podcast? I was like, yeah, let's do it. We start a podcast. Uh, later he's like, dude, I think I want to start a, let's start a conference. I'm like, that's crazy, dude. That's the hardest thing in the world. I've done some event planning stuff in the past as far as this organization. I was like, you don't know how hard that is, but sometimes ignorance is bliss, right? Sometimes yeah. not knowing how hard it is is what gets us to start something. And then we are kind of in too deep. We just got to keep going. And so we've been fortunate with stronger business out of the podcast for two plus years. Uh, we got, I don't know, we're probably episode 110 now. We're about to host our third Stronger Business Summit. First year was Jesse Itzler. He was our keynote. I mean, just uh, if you don't know Jesse oh, Itzler, I loved right it, now. dude. I loved it. I watched it. Jesse, Jesse story. I, for that to be have been your first conference, dude. You know, kudos to oh, you dude. guys because that that we, that was a that's a banger. That you know, that, you guys rocking, kicked it right? off. <laughs> and it was it was October 2020. It was the first live event that had happened in our town in like ten months. You know, and it was edgy. We're like, ah, should we do it? And we did it last year. We had Ryan Serhant. Uh, his name doesn't ring a bell quite as much, but his face does. He's a reality oh, TV star. Yeah. But he's got a huge real estate company. He's on the, um, I can't think of the name of what it. What is it? Well, a million dollar listing? Million dollar listing, uh, yeah. And no, he's, dude, a beast, but he's like, he, he is he talks phenomenal. A lot. He's a speaker. He's leveraged yeah, he it. Oh, yeah. He's got yeah. like one of the biggest real estate brands out there right now. He launched his own recently. And yeah. so he was killer. And we got Jesse Cole this year. I don't know if you know Jesse Cole. Actually, I, I know him by picture. I, I don't know him. On ESPN right Let me look at him. He, yeah. he just launched on ESPN. He owns the Savannah Bananas. It is this like oh, crazy Doug. circus style yellow tux. He's in like yellow suits. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Jesse Cole, we about. had him on our podcast yesterday. Jesse Cole was speaking this year and he's, he is blowing up, man. Like it, it, he's, he's going to be so freaking huge because he just, you know, did something unique. So that's kind of stronger business. Again, you hear the entrepreneur talking now. I got all, yeah. all this random crap going on. And, uh, but, but the crazy thing, man, with that, is we know as entrepreneurs, we're supposed to try to focus on what we can be, like where our, where our gifting is, where our strengths and abilities are, our passions meet, if we can find those things. And for me, it is in creating content and trying to engage and connect people with a bigger image of themselves, you know? Yeah. And so that's how Six Figure Cleaner, Stronger Business, again, that's for me, that's my Circle 7 strategy. Yeah. And being all in the cleaning business. And I think it's funny, God's got a sense of humor. The one thing I'm always trying to be like, put in the closet and not, you know, not be associated with, it's, I mean, dadgum, now I might put my face on it all the time, you know? Yeah. So, well, Josh, yeah, think about it. Yeah, think, so for people to listen, as you're listening, because, you know, I hope you're, like, honed in on we're, – we're two, we're, we're two guys here from the cleaning industry talking about multiple different businesses because that's what's possible. When, when You know, in this space, it's opened up doors, not only for me, but look, it, it's opened up many doors for you. But yeah. you just said – you said something that I, I, I wanted – I did not – Think about unpacking, but just unpack this bit a little bit, Josh. As you said, the you have you have the ability to start and execute multiple businesses, yet you know and are focusing on your cleaning business because you could call it right. I, we joke around here like Rosalado's my mothership, Rosalado's our foundation, Rosalado's our our home base, right? Is that like you always know where you came from? Because the cleaning business is your is your foundation, right? I mean, would you say that? Like, yeah. how can how can one if if somebody who's listening, they're a year into the business, they've got so many ideas. Any tips for them to be able to focus on the business, but be able to also manage their time to start up something else, or or you know, take an idea to reality? Like, what would you yeah. say? Like, any tips on that? Yeah, man, absolutely. And I mean, honestly, let me give you some kudos here. Because you've done such a good job and your team, I give you credit. You always pass the credit to your team, which I love about you. But you've helped me with how you show up on, on social media and all this and the pride you put in the industry. Part of that conversion for me, man, was that I saw the Rickies out there. You know, uh, I saw the Michael Browns out there, John Disselkamps. I saw these guys that gave me some more pride for the industry. And it helped me to be like, no, nah, man, let's go out and be proud about it. Let me, let's, I say, put my face on it. My face isn't on all our ads for our business or anything, but I just said, all right, I'm going to lean into this industry and be okay with it. Now, that being said, I think there's two things that go with this as far as in starting other things. If you're an entrepreneurial, you get the bug, man. And so sometimes we can get, we can lose focus too fast on the main thing because when the main thing gets hard, something else seems easier. And we want to start something on the side. So I'd say, hey, nail the main thing. Like, get it rolling good. And then when you want to chase the other interests, like, try to find them in your area, your passion, or your strengths, or your ability. So, and the reason I say that is that for me, I did this exercise. I can't remember what book it was from. One of my favorite authors, his name is Michael Hyatt. And it was like this little exercise called My Productivity Vision Statement. And it was like, what does productivity 
what would it mean for you one year from now, so 12 months down the road, if time and money weren't an issue? And so I wrote some things down, man. And it was like, I would create content. What he said, like write a paragraph and then I'd nail down to three words, three phrases. I was like, all right, I would create content that I could communicate to others. Uh, I would connect with others consistently and I would coach or consult. Within 12 months, I was getting paid in all three of those things. And so what I was able to figure out through the exercise, I was able to line up like what my, what I was passionate about. The other part of the exercise was like, Hey, what's that stake if you do this? Or what's that stake if you don't do this? And what do you gain if you do? Mm, so just I like a little that. simple exercise, man, it's one little page. But for me, and that's what helped me, Ricky, get out of some of the things I was doing on the side I wasn't passionate about and kind of go all in on the things I was. And so this stronger business stuff, it's crazy, but man, you know, how it is you, I mean, you guys said something, uh, Marley talks about not being able to buy the pack of gum. Yeah. And then I just, I lived that similar thing. I remember for me, it was a little different. I was calling my wife and saying, I'm at the gas station, which credit card do yeah. I need to use and how much money's on it? And man, I would put $3 of gas in, right? <laughs> it's like, it was crazy hard times and all that stuff. But over time, again, God said, go, on, go all in on the cleaning company. And I did. And then some of these other things popped up as opportunities. And there were just things right in the realm of my passion, right in the realm of my strength. Cause that guy, I want to talk stronger business is about talking to that guy back there. That's trying, that's trying to, that's bouncing the credit card, trying to buy a pack of gum. That's, you know, can't put their, can't put $3 worth of gas in their car. And I'm passionate about that, you know, and just like you're passionate for this industry and on, and on bringing esteem to these blue collar workers that help like make our, make our country great. Right. Oh yeah. I'm like, I want to talk to that. I want to talk to the Josh Melton at the gas pump. That's that's stress the freak out, man. And to the Marley at the, you know, at the gas station, the convenience store checkout line. And so I was just able to start focusing on these things I was passionate about. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're like, hey, I got that bug, man, I want to do something else. Don't just go where the opportunity lies. Go where the opportunity meets your passion, right? Because it's not hard for me to do stronger business. It's not hard for me to do six-figure cleaner, circle seven strategies. Those aren't hard. Those are fun. Bro, I don't play golf. I like yeah. it. I don't play golf. You know why? This is my hobby. I love this more than I love uh. golf. Tailgate for the Georgia games. I'm in Athens, freaking Georgia. We just won a national championship for the first time in 41 <laughs> years or something, right? And I'm like, and I love football. I'm like, I don't go tailgating and do all that stuff. I'm not knocking it, but I'm like, I just more passionate about this. Yeah. And so for those who want to, you know, set something up, I would say, hey, go where the opportunity is, but if, make it line up with your passion. There is, there is no, well, you may disagree with me on this. I don't think there are any once in a lifetime opportunities. I think there are, I think over the course of our lives, we run into several once in a lifetime opportunities, which means they're not once in a lifetime. So don't get no, stuck. I agree. I agree. I do this. It's like, no, nah, bro, if you want to grow and you want to get stronger, like you'll be looking for the right opportunities and you want to make sure you're saying yes to the right one. And I believe the right one aligns with what your passions and strengths are. Cause if going to work ain't hard, if going to work is 90% fun, not to say there's never hard parts or challenges, but dude, it's just, I just, I get fired up about doing it. That's the lane you want to be in, man. Yeah, dude, that's, that's powerful, man. Think about that. Like you're, it's okay to do these things. Like, you know, we're doing this podcast episode. Yeah. I do this because it's fun, dude. Right. Like it's not, it, it's not a job, right? You have jobs, right? You have, you have obligations yeah. that you have to do in other areas, but yeah, man, I, I like that that approach. And I hope everybody that's listening, you know, wrote the last two minutes down right now, because that is, that is probably many people that are listening that again, I didn't go to school. You didn't go to school to own a cleaning company, but I respect and appreciate the opportunities that have come from it. And like you said, I'm, I'm proud. I wasn't in the beginning. So tell, you know, for people to hear the message of a, hey, be proud of, of what we're doing. So like, it's, it's a big thing about the pride factor. Cause it, it dude, it, it, uh, how do you say you lose confidence, right? Like when you're confident of what you're, things become easy, man. I think confidence is a big thing in our industry that because they, people lack pride sometimes in owning a cleaning company and being the cleaning guy or girl that, uh, you lose opportunities, you know, opportunities yeah. are knocking on the door every day. Uh, you know, it's, it's on us to, mm -hmm. to open that door, kick that door down, open up another one. Uh, cause it's, you, you can't be worried about uh, why me or why didn't I get this chance or you do something about it, man. Right. You got You know, yeah, you're doing it. it. We're doing it. So that's what I love with watching what you do, man, is that again, like if people, once people get a taste of Ricky Regalado, wants to know who you are, they know that you're passionate about building opportunity for people 
and build and helping them build pride in it is what they do. And so that's why these opportunities pop up for you. And they like, you're just, you're all about enriching the lives of the, of the people in the cleaning business, man. And the people in the blue collar industry. And I just, I love that because you're going to see so many opportunities because again, your core values are who Ricky is. It lives out and creating those opportunities. And so again, I'm like, Hey, it, it looks like to me, I could be wrong. This is my perspective, but the things that you add tend to be things you're passionate about because it's bringing yeah. value to Oh, hundred percent, man. hundred percent. So I, I, I did not want to forget about this question that just reminded myself, not even a question, but just, you know, I'm a fellow uh, husband and wife duo that started our company. To, to those listening that are, you know, should I start a company with my husband or my wife or my cousin or my brother? Like, was it, you know, could you just talk about that, that initial stage of you're working with Kim, you yeah. guys, Hey, was there anything that you were like, oh God, you know, I don't know if we should do this together, or did you know from day one, it's a no brainer, we could do this together? Like, how how did that, you know, evolve basically? Yeah, man, great question. For us, we believed we could do it together. I will say, like going back and looking at it, like it was brutal for us trying to grow it. We had, you know, very we were opposites, right? So I was real strong in some areas. She's real strong in some areas. And sometimes those really bucked up against each other. And that's honestly why for us, like it kind of, our business stagnated a little bit. And I, cause I didn't want to grow it because she had stress about it. Right. So I'm like, I don't want to get another client because it's just going to bring you stress, so, stress. Yeah, yeah. You know, how this is right. And so that's why I ended up partnering up. I'm like, maybe they're selling this thing or I'm going to find a, you know, a partner. And we did that. And my partner, like it was a second gig for him. He's like, yeah, whatever. But it, it was awesome for Kim and myself like, and she, and we both work in the business now, like she's in the business too. And we work really well together. Now we're young, you know, we're running and gunning and all that stuff. Like we believe that we can do it, but there were, there were challenges along the way and do it, you know, like everything becomes, can become about the business. Um, when you're, when you're hustling that hard, well, I mean, too, we started 2005, 2006, we're building this thing as the economy is about to crash, you know, and a lot of the, but so we, it was some tough times, but looking back, I would say there's definitely things I'd change in regards to how hard we worked. I'd probably say, Hey, we, man, if I can go back and coach younger Josh, younger Kim, I say, Hey, y'all don't chase that one. But, uh, at the same time, you know, you look back and say it made us tough. Uh, we got our scratches and bruises and sure just like you and Marley do, but overall we look back, man, I see where we're at now from our like, Josh and Kim is like the our relationship and we've never been better, you know, and part of that comes from the toughness that we had to build. We're trying to grow something like this. And again, over the last couple of years, man, cause we, we scaled this thing pretty, pretty crazy over the last three years. And it was, that's been tough too. We were doing it with kids, but at the same time, it's, I don't know. I think it's worth it, man. I think yeah. if you can't, not to say people should or shouldn't go with their spouse, but I'm like, if you can learn how to love and learn how to lead, yourself and each other then you can do this thing it yeah man a self no i'll do that you know and, it, and it's it's funny like i'll hear people talk about you know and i'm i'm up in the air with this you know i don't know what you think too but like i actually just did strategic coach uh, a few weeks oh, ago yeah. and it's very big on time and i was like you know and they use me as an example most of the time because they're like rick you know you've got such a unique business you have so many damn family members in your business uh, you know, because a lot of the people there, larger companies, smaller companies, good mix. Uh, but they were like, you have to turn off the, the you have to turn off, you know, dinner time is, you know, non business related or vacation and this and that. And I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, question, I got my hands up. I'm like, my hand was up a lot. I was raising my hand a lot. And I'm like, so you're telling me, is it bad if I'm at dinner and me and my wife are talking about old times or we're talking about the struggles or, you know, my wife's not in the day to day right now. So I'll, I share everything with her, you know, so I get her mm -hmm. feedback. I want her feedback constantly. So we're, we're actually talking about work. I'm like, we're talking about business. A lot of the times when I'm away from work, I'm like, but I don't feel that that's that bad. You know, like we have good conversations, like quick ones sometimes. And, you know, I would say it's actually healthy sometimes because, because she's not there day to day, I fill her in. She gives me honest feedback with no biased opinion because she's like, hey, I'm not there. I don't know what's going on. You know, share and explain. And I'm like, it actually helps me. She's, you know, the, the coach at the time is, well, Rick, you know, I really don't have an answer for you on that one. Uh, let's just say it's a unique situation, but I guess <laughs> you could talk about it. Like, do you see, do you and Kim and, you know, others that are listening that are, are you know, family business owners too, like us, do you 
do you catch yourselves talking about work when you're on vacation, oh, yeah. when you're in dinner, when you're, you know, right? Well, we don't, Ricky, we don't think this is the same for you. We don't hate it. You know, I mean, it's something that's got to be it, man. If we love yeah, I mean, since you love your it, heart man. and soul into it. But that's why I say, too, when you're looking at if you're doing do something else, I'm like, well, man, don't pour all your time and energy and effort into something that you can't care about. You know, if it's something that don't fall into your area of strengths or something you get passionate about, then because you're going to have to talk about it maybe at dinner sometimes. You don't want to have to talk about something that you hate. Right. So for me and Kim, man, we're all in kind of people. And so we're all in and we talk about it. I think the challenge comes when it's like, hey, if you can't talk, if, if you can't get yourself to stop talking about it or you can't talk about anything else. Right. Then the business is almost an idol in your life. But mm -hmm. it's like, well, not move from. If you can move in and out, if I can talk, me and Kim can talk about the kids and then talk about the business and it just, it's just our life, man. I mean, fluid. it all goes fluid. Yeah. But, yeah. but if we could only talk about the business, I'd like, well, that's probably a problem, you know, but <laughs> we couldn't talk about it too. If it was like, no, you can't talk about it. I'm like, well, that's a problem too, man. Because if I'm pouring my passion into it and then I can't talk about it, I, I can't be me. Yeah. Great. So I think if you're all in and again, you're doing something you love, you care about, you find, again, I say, keep saying, find passion in it. You know, that doesn't mean, by the way, I say that I don't, I don't personally, I'm not passionate about cleaning. Like, I'm not passionate about like scrubbing a toilet, yeah, you're but passionate I'm, passionate about, about building. I'm yeah. passionate about building, building, building this, this, this company that I believe can impact people for the better. And so I love my team members. I don't even, I don't all, you know, you, you know, this is, you don't know everybody that was playing on your team, but you still care about them. And like, mm -hmm. I care about, I want to make sure that person has a great experience here and you care about your clients, even if you don't know them. And so I think leading in that way, if, like, if you can be all in what you're doing and, I don't know, being in all your life, bro. I mean, me and Kim yeah. go from work to the soccer fields. We both coach together. And it's just, nice. this is what it is. So I don't yeah. have any issues with couple. I'm like, if you can't talk about, if you can, again, if you can't stop talking about it, it's a problem. But if you also can't talk about it at all, I think that's a problem too. Yeah. It's not too soon. So yeah, and like we, like, like we were talking about Josh earlier, because I think there's a great point to make, right? We said, hey, we're entrepreneurs. But what I tell you earlier is, you said it a couple of times now, building for everybody out there, you know, think about this, like, I, you know, and I shared this with Josh earlier, another approach or another way to look at what we do is we're building, we're builders, right? Kudos to my buddy Ruben that I heard, heard him say yesterday, but you just, we're building legacies, we're building companies, we're building a future for many people. So again, if you're an entrepreneur, you may just be a builder as well, guys. Uh, yes. Josh, let's talk about uh, some resources or framework that you saw early on that you feel catapulted you guys to where you're in the space, not that you automate everything, but what, any type of framework tips or processes, you know, you hear that word all the time, right? That everybody who's listening, any nuggets on just your framework that help you go from, I would say, you know, small mom and pop manual processes to some type of automation, some type of, of leveraging uh, a system to, to build and continue to build your business. Yeah. So, I mean, you just saw it, you know, there's the books that we know about, we hear about forever, right? It looks like the E-Myth. Um, I, I tell you a book that moved me from the standpoint, it made me think about things differently, similar in fashion to the E-Myth. And it tells like a parable story, but it was called Built to Sell. And it just talked about like, hey, you need to build a business that you can personally not be in because you're either going to sell this sucker, you're going to leave it to your kids, you know, because you're, you're going to die, you're going you're to leave your business. So you're going to sell it, you're going to leave it to your kids, or you're going to go out of business. So like, you're probably not going to plan to go out of business. So you need to build it so it can live without you. That book was huge for me as far as in looking at it like, all right, I don't need to be the magic here. I got to build systems and put that stuff into place. Now, it's one thing to read the book and know that stuff. It's another thing to be able to implement. A turning point for us, you're going to like this. This is a shout out to your boy. Is at a certain point, man, I'm like, I can't keep track of all these people signing in or whatever. I say signing in, like showing up to work. And I don't know they're there so our business model by the way it's not like people come to the office and then go out it's no like they right just, yeah they you know, show up in the office yeah and we we found swept i mean in their early days of swept it's like i think their first 12 months we signed on with them game changer um we started using a route this past year i mean i was always winging it you know we'll i would do a lot of the sales myself for a long time but when i started like wanting to build that into somebody else i was like well, we got to start following a system you know, so I think the biggest thing, man, I could say, Ricky, and, th and those are two things that we use again, route and we use swept would be you can figure some of this stuff out without those things. But system, I heard this acronym, don't know where from system means 
Save yourself time, energy, and money. So it says, yeah, you may be able to do it better on your own, but gosh, if you can have a system that you can leverage and then you let the per you hire somebody and you got the system here, you leverage the system. Like, hey, let me train you on the system. Not let me tell you, let me, it's way easier for me to teach somebody how to use route than it is for them to me to teach them how to think about pricing a job the way that I do it. Yeah, you know, true. Even if there's, yeah. you know, so those things, I think that it comes down to it. I would say there's some phenomenal technological systems out there exist that exist now that you can leverage as systems that didn't exist when I started. They didn't exist when you started, right? Nah, when you built nah, right. Nah, so nah. I think take advantage of those systems, man, this is, I was thinking this earlier, Ricky, and you guys are doing this with route right now with the, uh, the, I don't know if it's mastermind or membership or whatever it is you're nah, doing. Mentorship. You're like, nah. mentorship. We're going to train them a lot. I'm like, do that. Yeah. I would say people early on, I love the Facebook groups. There was something I was in in the early day. It was like global cleaning association, not forum or something. I don't know what it was back before <laughs> Facebook even existed. But uh, I had learned through that and you had to be committed to getting that group because it was old school chat room style. But now Facebook groups are phenomenal. But bro, you don't know if the person answering your question has any clients or not. And yeah. I can tell you two instances I knew of. I saw somebody answer a question on Facebook with confidence, right? Like I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to do that. But I knew for a fact, because I'd had private conversations with these people, they had zero clients. See no that? clients. Like, right? Oh, it's crazy. That's like, crazy. if I could start there, if I'm coaching somebody else to start, they're like, what's the first thing I should do? I would say, you need to, like, don't spend 18,000 hours on Facebook sorting because you don't know who's got fruit on the tree and who doesn't. And you just don't know. Buy a course, hire a coach, join a mentorship program, like, go pay for some information. It'll save you so much time and keep you from making so many mistakes because you'll learn from people that got fruit on the tree. They don't yeah. want to give you stupid things. Right. And so I'm like, if I could give a plug for the route mentorship program, if you're listening and you haven't done that, especially if you're, if you're in the earlier days, jump in on that. There, there's multiple ways to price a job. There's multiple ways to you know operate your business with software, choose some paths and just commit to them and roll with it. I tell people, I'm like, look, I can't tell you what the other stuff is for operational software. I use Swept and it's been phenomenal for me. So I, if you want to use something else, use it, but I use Swept. I can teach you how to use Swept and grow your yeah. business. Yeah. You know, so that would be it, man, is like, you, you want to hire a coach or join a mentor, whatever it is, buy a course, pay for knowledge versus just trying to sort it off for free. You'll save yourself a tremendous amount of time and you'll, you'll, you'll make money faster doing that and then leverage these phenomenal software tools that are out there these days do them early too don't wait don't be like let me wait till i can quote unquote afford it like no like set it up from the start 100%. unless you're just always going to be a one-man team yeah, but if man. you're trying to grow up you ain't got to be the, the magic in all the time set it up right from the start build it right from the start follow the right leaders from the start and you'll be exponentially further down the road five years down the road you know let's say than you would be if you're trying to nitpick on facebook uh, who should i be listening oh, to? oh god dude. i couldn't I, I i couldn't agree with you more man that's why we did the whole mentorship thing because yeah same thing i was i was you know i'm on the facebook groups we have our own facebook group yeah but it's a I it's, start today. it's a job to manage it because you know things are just credibility man at the end of the day it's credibility not to say people you know that aren't from the industry can't be credible resources too but it's tough man if you don't know our industry and you can't talk like every aspect of the like the the journey from a lead to a sale to managing the time the invoicing the billing like that i i don't know if i should be listening to you right but you don't know that you just don't know that yeah so dude, and as we're saying that we you and i pay for we pay to be parts of a group oh, so I still, I'm, and business. i'm still paying for coaching yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, i pay for coaching all day every day because i Me am too. not the smartest man in the room and i never will be and I'm okay with that because I'm un I'm uncomfortable when I'm uncomfortable, and I mm -hmm. don't like to not know at least a little bit, and and I'll go pay to learn 100. percent Well, even if you know just as much as the guy you're coaching with, let's say you got identical businesses, bro, it's just having somebody else that can understand that you can talk to that's Soundboard. not so emotionally invested in your deal, right? Oh, yeah. You and I are talking about our own businesses, like we can't see certain things because we're emotional about it. So you oh, can yeah. coach something in my business, I can coach something in yours. Where it'd be like, hey man, it's pretty obvious, but we're just our emotions cloud our logic Ooh. sometimes. So you just need somebody else that's got some knowledge that can speak into like, hey bro, here's probably what you should do. You know, I'm not emotionally tied into that person, but you probably need to fire them. Yeah, like you, you're like, ah, I can't fire. I them, can't man. do it, y'all, oh, dude. I'm and I'm the worst. I mean, if, if any of my team <laughs> listening to this, they're gonna be like, and that's why Ricky's not an HR. That's why he doesn't <laughs> do it. I emotions make they. 
they can make or break some decision making that you did. So I'm happy that you said or you touched on that. So see, that's why people got to listen all the way down to 45 minutes here. We're in 45 <laughs> minutes here. Last question, though. Last question to wrap this up because I, I thought I saw this in one of your profiles, Josh, and I thought this was pretty cool and important. I wanted to end with this to get your nuggets at the end here is you're driven by helping people reignite their dreams that they once had. I thought that was a powerful statement. Like what, go deeper into that. Like how, how do you, how do you find, what, what do you think is a powerful driver for you to be able to help them? You know, cause that's a big statement. You know, once they once had like what, what's behind that? Yeah. So, man, all right, I, I read this book. I think it was called The On Purpose Person. I read somewhere, and it said uh, your purpose statement should be two words after this. I exist to what? I exist to, to what? And so the maverick part of me, you know, this entrepreneur is that maverick. I'm like, I'm not putting two words, bro. You know, I'm at three words or whatever. <laughs> but over time, man, it just something hit me, and I, I was able to craft this mission statement. Now, here's the crazy thing. This is a time in my life where, like, I wasn't well, who I needed to be. But this, like, I feel like, Ricky, that we all have these things inside of us. And part of worshiping God, to me, is that is mining out the greatness and the thumbprint, thumbprint of God within us. It's like you got to figure out what it is he's called you to and what your purpose is. And so I felt like I was able to mine this piece out, even though I wasn't in a spot of my life where I was like being everything I needed to be. But it said, I exist. And this is the words that came. It said, reignite dreams, awaken souls, and challenge the status quo. And my personality types, I'm, I'm a challenging, I'm a Enneagram type eight, like I'm a high D personality. So I'm like a, you know, I'm blunt. I speak the, what I believe the truth to be. Mm -hmm. But those words came to me, man. And then I just, I think they go together. And here's what I mean by it. If you, I think, again, everybody's got that dream. They got something inside of them that needs to come out in their life. But I think as we grow older, life kicks our freaking butt, man. And we just like, it closes up a little bit, right? So I'm like, we have a, we have a dream that I believe the light goes out on oftentimes. So, all right, well, you can reignite that dream. If you can speak into the future, like the, the, the potential of somebody, who they can be. If you can speak into that, sometimes there's a little spark. And I had it happen to me one time. This is probably right before the, the the words came. I was talking to somebody and I just saw like the light flicker in their eye. I could like see it almost like it was a daggum spiritual vision, man. I was like, that's what I, we just talked about. They changed, something opened yeah. up. But it's reading like the dream. And that dream, man, once the dream comes back alive, Ricky, it's like their soul wakes up. It's like, I realize I've been sleeping, right? Like I, my soul's been asleep and that wakens up. And then the, the, the challenge, the challenging the status quo piece is just that, when you realize you have not been who you have the potential to be, when your dream comes back alive, when your soul wakes up, you're like, hold on a second. I've been living for second place, man. Like I've been living for like whatever the heck this is and I'm supposed to be this. And so the status quo is what it is. The story of who you can be challenges that, right? And there's always that thing. And it's like, there's, there's that tension there. My favorite songs, Dare to Move by Switchfoot. It says tensions here between who you are and who you could be between how it is and how it should be. And I'm like, bro, if you wake your dream up, your soul comes alive, you are going to challenge the status quo. And you're going to go for who you can be in your life. So my purpose in life, this is who I am. We talk about mission and vision values, all that stuff for our business, man, for my life, who I am, mission. I exist to tell a story. I'm going to tell Ricky Regalado a story about Ricky that reignites his dreams, awakens his soul and challenges his status quo so he can be the best Ricky Regalado he can freaking be. And I, and I feel like I've done a great job even before we ever talk because you're crushing it, man. No. I think you'd be the best Ricky you can be, man. You're doing your thing. But I know that even though it's, that's probably not the words you use for your mission or purpose statement, but that's something that you bring to the table and you do for people in this industry. And it's why I look up to you as a leader, man. And I'm excited to be, you know, when Ricky Regalado speaks, I listen because I feel no. like, you're challenging the status quo with me. So I appreciate whatever, all the stuff that you do for us in our industry, man, is you kill it. And I appreciate it about you, man, dude, goosebumps. I got goosebumps over here. That was, and that, that's why hosts always nail it with the best question at the end. That was solid, dude. I got to pre, I appreciate the words you just spoke because again, I mean, so many nuggets in there, man. I think you feel the passion behind when you're talking and, and we're lucky as an industry to have people, you know, like yourself, you know, like us in general, just, I don't think anything else speaks louder than the passion, right? Because what does passion mean is we care and you just showed how much you care, man. I, I really appreciate you sharing that. I, I, I didn't know what was going to come out of your mouth because I didn't really dig too deep into that statement, but damn, that was good. <laughs> awesome, man. You guys, well, 
Josh, if you don't mind, I'm going to you know add all your information in the description. Everybody knows what we do. You guys will, will see uh, the YouTube clip that comes out. But uh, you, you're probably going to see 15 different Instagram nuggets come out of this conversation. Um, again, it's... Dude, this, this is amazing. I know you. I, you know, I personally know you, but I feel like I got to know you even more. And that's why I love doing this, man. That's why I love doing these podcast episodes because you walk away with somebody that's impacted you, but yet at the same time, you impacted thousands of people listening. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Is there any last words you'd like to leave for our cleaning community? Yeah, man. If you're not subscribed to the Route Channel, Subscribe to the Route Channel for all. If the podcast, you listen to the podcast, other places, go rate this podcast, subscribe to it, because this thing needs to continue to get bumped up so people can find it. Because we know, I mean, oh gosh, all the get I was listening to, or to you talk to Cristobal earlier today. I was like, man, this is so good, man. Yeah. So for you guys listening, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, give five star reviews and all the things. And uh, that'll, that'll continue to elevate Ricky because Ricky continues to elevate the profession, man. So again, appreciate you for cleaning and cocktails. This is a huge thing for me. I'll, I'll, it'll probably be on my like website. I'll be like, hey, I was on cleaning and cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. You guys, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, cheers to a drink, my friend. Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. All right, yes, guys. Sir.